Hello everyone, this is Dr. Michael from MLR Institute of Technology. We are discussing the course Digital Electronics and Computer Organization. Today's topic is Basic Theorems and Properties of Boolean Algebra. We will be seeing Boolean Algebra, its basic theorems and properties. We will also discuss the applications. So, what is Boolean Algebra? I hope students are familiar with the general algebra where you can have variables. If we say x is an integer, x is a variable which take values of type integer. Now here, when we say Boolean algebra, we are having variables which can take values as either true or either as false and we will have logical operations in algebra as we have in regular algebra as we have different mathematical operations here also we have in the boolean algebra we have mathematical operations between variables but the variables a variable a boolean variable can either take true or false only two possibilities a boolean variable can take. So, true is represented by 1, false is represented by 0. Let us understand this with a simple example. Suppose if we say, suppose there are two persons, one has name A, another has name B. If we say both A and B meet me, suppose. Then A is equals to me 1 means A has met me. B is equals to 0 means B didn't meet me. If I say both A and B meet me, if only one person comes, technically I should not accept that. So, based on this simple understanding of the English word and, we have the and operation. So, only if both the variables are true or if the both the variables are 1, the output is 1. Here b is 0, any one variable is 0, the output should be 0. Hence, we have a 0 here. Likewise, or if I say a or b, any one person meet me. If a meets me, even if b does not meet me, still the output is 1. So, that is an example of the operations within the Boolean algebra. We have seen AND operation, we have seen OR operation. Let us see the different theorems and properties. So, first identity law. Here, if we have two variables that are operating and we get the same result. For example, A or 0 is A. Now, remember plus represents or multiplication is AND operation. So, dot here is the AND operation. Plus here is the OR operation. Now, suppose if A is 0, 0 or 0 will be 0. So, again you get back A. If A is 1, 1 or 0 gives us 1. Such law is known as identity law. You get back the same A. Likewise, it is very simple, similar to your regular algebra. Anything plus 0, you get the same thing. A plus 0 gives us A. Again, anything multiplied by 1 gives us the same variable. So, A into 1 gives us a, similar to regular algebra, we have identity law here. Then, commutative law. Suppose we have two Boolean variables, A and B. Now, if you perform operations by changing the order. So, that is what commutative law considers. If you perform A into B, if you perform B into A, the result is the same. The same is valid in 
algebra, regular algebra. A into B is equals to B into A. 2 into 3 is equals to 3 into 6. 3 into 2, both are 6. 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. 3 multiplied by 2 is also 6. Likewise, in Boolean algebra, it is valid. Again, in regular algebra, 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 2 is also 5. The same is also valid in the case of Boolean algebra. But remember, here the variables, they take either value of 0 or 1, not more than that. Next, we have associative law. So, here the order of performing Boolean operator is illogical. Means, suppose if you have A into B multiply by C. Okay, let us take the example of regular algebra. Okay. Regular algebra, suppose if we have say 2 into 3, right? And then suppose let us do into 5. So, first let us perform this 3 to the 6. Again, 6 into 5 gives us 30. Suppose we calculate in a different order. Suppose we do 2 into 3 multiplied by 5. 3 into 5 gives us 15. 15 into 2 again gives us 30. So, what did we understand from this? Irrespective of the order that we consider. The order of performing the operation is illogical. First, you do A into B and then multiply by C or you first multiply B into C and then multiply by A. Still, it is valid. So, that was your associative law. Distributive law. So, here suppose A into B plus C again similar to regular algebra. What we can do? You can multiply A inside separately with B and a again separately you can multiply with C and then you will add the two results similar to again your regular algebra. Next inversion law. If you take complement for example complement of 1 is 0 complement of 0 is 1. So, what is happening? Okay, Let me write here. Suppose A has value 1. Suppose A is 1. Take complement of this 1, it becomes 0. Again, you take complement, it becomes 1. So, 2 times if you take complement, we get back the same result. So, that is your inversion law. Next, idempotent law. Again, we have two categories. One is for and, another is for or. So, here, a and A, this is the symbol for and. A and A gives us A. Suppose if I say Suresh and Suresh meet me, it is only one Suresh that meets me. Likewise, if I say Suresh or Suresh, there is only one Suresh. So, A or A is again A. So, here let us now look at the applications. Primarily, the Boolean algebra is used to perform logical operations in digital computers. Also, it is used for simplifying complex Boolean expressions. Actually, the Boolean expressions we can have in terms of AND operation, OR operation, NOT operation. By these three simple operations, we can develop the entire Boolean algebra. So, now looking at the second point, second point here we are saying that we can simplify complex Boolean expressions. Let us see that with the help of an example. Suppose this is the question p into q, sorry, p plus q into p plus r. This is a single expression p plus q into p plus r. Let us simplify that. So, first similar to 
regular algebra what we can do the p we can multiply with p plus q plus the q we can multiply with this term first we will multiply p with this term then next we will multiply q with this term so p into p next p into r next p into p is done okay next q into p next q into r so we got four terms now what we can do here is in the previous slide we have seen suresh and suresh it's only one suresh right so p into p gives us p that okay that is your idempotent law now here again in these two terms we can take p common so if we take p common we are left with 1 plus r remaining terms we are not disturbing we are writing them as it is so that is using distributive law now again r plus 1 1 plus anything gives us always 1 so it is like this true 1 stands for true now even if r is false we have a true case here okay we can proceed with the true case even if r is true double okay so that is the reason 1 plus anything in boolean algebra is always 1 that is known as dominance law 1 is dominating hence we have the term dominance law so 1 into r gives us 1 1 into p gives us p so these remaining two terms we are writing as it is now again in the first term and in the second term we can take anything common here yes okay we can in fact take again p common we can take p common here and ultimately we can directly go to this step if you take p common you will left out with one one plus anything again gives us one so we can get the p qr you can write and one into p again gives us p so this is the final result now if you see this was the expression and this is the simplified expression now when we go for simplified expression the amount of hardware that is involved to perform the computation is also reduced hence it's an advantage so we have seen boolean algebra its basic theorems and properties we have also seen applications that's all for today's class thank you